consider some matrix A and the transformation that it represents. The question is, what are the various subspaces that in some way relate to this transformation, that relate to this matrix? It turns out that there's two very natural subspaces that every single matrix A has that represent important things to us in the study of transformations, in the study of linear algebra. So I want to begin by consider this transformation that we've got here, and I've put on the one basis vector 1, 0, and the other basis vector 0, 1. Now, if I do this transformation, what it does is it collapses everything down onto the x-axis. So this x-axis here is sort of special because that's all the b values where ax is equal to b. It's, it's all of the vectors that get hit by this transformation, and indeed anything not on the x-axis doesn't get hit by the transformation because everything just collapses right down onto the x-axis. So this set here, all of the targets of my transformation, is something that I'm interested in studying, and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call that the column space. So I want to look generally, if I've got a matrix A, it's an M by N matrix, and its columns are the columns A1 down to AN. Then the column space is defined to be, well, precisely what we just said. It's all the vectors B, where they can be written AX equal to B, as in there is some value of X where AX is going to hit it. It's all of the targets of this particular transformation. Now, I can rewrite this if I like, because AX, if you recall, that's matrix vector multiplication, and it was just a shorthand for linear combinations. So if I just expand out the AX, this is the same thing as the set of all vectors B, where B is a linear combination of the columns of A, a linear combination of the A1 down to the AN. And in effect, we're saying that there is some value of X where the AX is equal to B, or, or some linear combination of the A's that's going to equal this B. But this we've seen before, saying all the vectors that are linear combinations of some list, that was just the definition of the span. So this is just going to be the span of that list of vectors. And this is why I called it the column space in the first place. The, the, the sort of thing I was interested in was all of the targets, the sort of range of this transformation. But when you try to go and write down what that is in a linear transformation, what you get is just the span of the columns of the matrix A. And so indeed, the, the set of targets is going to just be called the column space. Now, two different points. First of all, this span, where does it live? The B is the output vectors. So if it's an M by N matrix, it inputs M vectors like X and outputs M vectors. So this is the subset of RM. It's in the output. It's in the codomain. All right. Second point is that, is this actually a subspace? I mean, I just define it in terms of set notation with my squiggly brackets. That's a set notation, and when the vertical bar means such that. But a subset is not necessarily a subspace. However, in the previous video, we'd proven that the span of a list of vectors was indeed a subspace, and since the column space is equivalent to this span, it is indeed truly a subspace. Now, if I want to go and compute this, it's relatively easy to verify if a vector is in there or not. Like, if I want to see that b is in the column space, I just solve ax equal to b. If I can solve ax equal to b, it's in the column space. If I can't, it's not. Well, we've solved AX equal to B, we know how to do that. We're just going to do our row reductions, we're going to put it in our REF form, and we're going to be able to quickly see whether or not we can or cannot solve this. So that was the first subspace related to a matrix A that was special to us. Let's look at the second. So I'm going to again begin with the same transformation I had before, the 1, 0, 1, 0. But I'm going to go and put in a specific vector here. So this is the vector 2, minus 2. And I can go and I can write it in terms of the standard basis vectors. So this is two steps to the right, or twice the one basis vector, and two steps down as in minus two times the second basis vector. Okay, now if I go and apply my transformation here, everything squishes down to the plane. It was kind of a little bit funny because the vectors are still laying there. The zero vector could be represented in many ways. The zero vector could be represented just zero times wherever the transformation took E1, and zero times wherever the transformation took E2. But I had originally started with a specific combination, twice the first vector and minus two times the second one. So I just sort of go and stretch it, I see where those get it, and indeed zero is the same as taking two steps to the right and two steps back. Now this is one vector, I should have cherry picked it, 
that maps down to the zero. But are there other vectors? Is, in, is it the case that there's a whole bunch of different vectors, all of which under this transformation map to zero? And I think so, because we sort of saw everything collapses. So we really think that this is not a one-to-one -one transformation. Indeed, we've seen that before. So to solve for all of them, I need to know when is ax equal to zero? I want to figure out what x values is ax equal to zero. So I'm solving this homogeneous system where I've taken my matrix and I've appended zero, zero. I want to solve it. Well, we can do that. We've got a free column here. I'm going to label it x2 is equal to s. I, from the first row, I can go and say that x1 plus x2 is zero. And then I can rewrite it in its vector form. And I can say the vector x is just all scalar multiples that parameter s times the vector minus one, one. This makes a line. All multiples of a vector, that's just going to be some line, and indeed we can see it. So this tells us what all of the different vectors are going to be. Anything along that line, which is multiples of minus 1, 1, any multiple of that is going to end up 0. So let's watch the transformation go by. Okay, it squeezes down, and indeed we get it all equaling 0. This is the idea of the null space. I'm interested in all of the vectors that are nullified, or in other words, set to 0 by a transformation. So I'm going to again begin with an arbitrary matrix A. It's again n by n, and its columns are the a1 down to the an. Then the null space is formally defined to be all of the vectors where ax is equal to 0. All the vectors killed off, set to 0. Now this time, it is a subspace of the input. I'm looking at the x vectors now. x were the inputs of my transformations. They live in rn, not the outputs like the column space did. These are the inputs. So these are going to be some subsets of Rn. Now, for actually computing this, the null space is great. It's actually even better than the column space. In the column space, I could test whether an individual vector was or was not in the column space. But here, I know how to solve Ax equal to 0. This is a homogeneous system. We've done it many times. So I just solve Ax equal to 0, and that's going to tell me all of the vectors that are in my null space. So like the example we just did, we wrote out the homogeneous system. We solved it. And then how do I write this? I say the null space is just going to be equal to the set of all of these multiples, all of these s parameter multiplied by the minus 1, 1. And that's how I'm going to write down my null space. Now, I said the null space was a subspace, but I haven't actually proven that yet. I have only shown that it is a subset that I might care about. In the case of the column space, we sort of cheated because we saw the column space was, was the span of something we previously showed when the span was indeed a subspace. We don't have that here. We haven't yet figured out whether or not the null space is the span of something. Spoiler it will be. Now, how do I prove then that it's a subspace? So let's just test our different conditions that we need to do. We've got the three of them. Okay, is the zero vector in the null space? Well, yeah. A times zero is equal to zero. Zero vector is killed off by A, so there we go. It's got the first point. Second point, okay, let me imagine that ax equal to zero. And now I would want to look at a times cx. So indeed, if we could do that, if ax is equal to zero, then a times cx by linearity is c times ax. So c times zero, which is always going to be zero. So we have the second of these points. Third point, okay, now I want to have an x and a y. And both of those vectors are killed off. So ax is 0 and ay is 0. And then I'm going to add them. And what I'm going to get is that a of the sum, a of x plus y, is just by linearity again, a of x plus a of y, which is 0 plus 0, which is 0. So notice that, yes, this is indeed going to be a subspace. And we've proven it by the essential linearity properties of matrix multiplication. That was critical to both the second and the third steps here, that we could just use linearity to get our result. So the null space is the second important subspace. All right, so let's compare the two. I've got my matrix, it's n by n, and I've got the two different things. I've got the null space, and I've got the column space. The null space is defined to be the vectors that are killed off, where ax equal to 0. And the column space is defined to be the span of the columns of a. Now, these vectors live in different places. The null space is the input vectors. It's the rn. Well, the column space is the output vectors. It's the rn. As in the null space is in the domain, and the column space is in the codomain. Then I can go and figure out, well, how do I figure it out? To figure out the null space, you want to find the x values where a is equal to 0. This is just solving a homogeneous system. It tells you all the x values. Whereas for the column space, we want to find the b values where a x equal to b. If 
For any given B value, you can go and run that computation as well. And then geometrically, when we were looking at the null space, we were saying, okay, look, I've got an entire line in my inputs, in my domain, and that entire line is going to squeeze down to zero. That's what we're interested in. That is our null space, was that original green line. But if I want to go and look at the column space, well, I'm already in my codomain now. It's just specifying that all those vectors that where they ended up, in this case, the x-axis, that was going to be our codomain. So those are our two fancy special subspaces associated to a matrix, the null space and the column space.